In 1980, Iran and Iraq engaged in a brutal eight-year-long conflict, which eventually ended up with basically a white peace. Arguably, this can already be considered a victory for the Iranian side. They were the ones under attack here, while Iraq was favored by not just one, but both of the world's superpowers. Just the fact that Iran managed to ensure its territorial sovereignty and defend their new Islamic regime from all of this foreign pressure, I would see as a victory. Yet still, Iran can win harder. Their plans for the Middle East foresaw a wave of Shiite Islamic theocracies rising. This war, while not chosen, could provide the perfect opportunity to spread their revolution to the first target, installing a revolutionary Shiite government in Iraq. Iraqi President Saddam Hussein was himself a Sunni Muslim and while claiming a secular government, the Sunni Arabs held most important positions, leaving the Shiite majority oppressed. In fact, this is one of the major reasons that Iraq invaded Iran, besides hopes for territorial expansion and increased control over the region's oil supply. Immediately after taking power, the Iranian government began calling for the violent overthrow of the Iraqi government. So with that, the Iranian goal should be quite clear, the conquest of Iraq. But here we reach a tough issue. Iraq had a quite competent army and most of the major powers preferred Iraq over Iran. What this means is that if we assume a longer war where Iran slowly wins the initiative and then comes close to toppling Iraq, many nations may suddenly get a lot more involved in the conflict, forcing Iran to back down. Basically, we cannot let the international community have the time to coordinate a response. How I suggest we do this is letting Iraq launch a way stupider offensive into Iran, probably by letting them commit to a devastating charge towards Tehran only to fail and get encircled. After their initiative runs out, the Iranian counteroffensive is swift and devastating. Basically, we cannot let the war turn into a long and dragged out trench conflict like in our timeline. Is this realistic? Not really. It would require a frankly insane degree of incompetency from the Iraqi side, and even then, the odds for Iran to fully rout the Iraqis is very low. But this is important. With this swift Iranian turnaround, nations sympathetic to Iraq struggle to respond in time, while China blocks the UN from sanctioning relief for Iraq. As the major powers discuss a response, it is basically turned futile as the final major Iraqi cities start to collapse. As the Hussein government goes into exile, Iran installs their revolutionary puppet regime in Iraq. Despite UN refusal though, America may very well consider intervention by themselves. Here, the Cold War is Iran's savior. The Soviets would already be struggling in Afghanistan and are unlikely to start a simultaneous invasion of Iran. Now while America could seriously consider intervening themselves, there is no way that the Soviets could accept a new American-led regime in Iran. Disagreements between the great powers allow Iran to remain and consolidate their new position in the Middle East. So Iran has suddenly become a far greater threat than they already were in our timeline. There are very serious fears that Iran may now plan a further invasion into Arabia and should they be successful in that move, suddenly the majority of the world's oil would be in their control, and in the worst case scenario, the holy cities of Islam as well. It is quite likely that the Saudis, extremely panicked, start housing American soldiers in order to deter further Iranian actions. With the outright Iranian conquest of Iraq, Arab unity in the face of perceived Iranian imperialism would likely be significantly strengthened, while the Saudis would grow far closer to America as they have to rely on them far more to prevent the rise of Iran. Soon after that though, the Soviet Union collapses, and now the United States are left as the sole superpower. In the short term, the West would be mainly focused on the aftermath in Europe and to a lesser extent Asia. But once the dust settles, war hawks within American politics, especially on the side of the Republicans, would wait for any opportunity to strike against Iran, as America is very much still bitter about the Iraqi defeat. America has a very short window, where Russia is still regaining their strength and China is only at the start of their modernization push 
to knock out the Iranians unopposed. And that excuse might very well come in September of 2001. The sheer threat of Iran undoubtedly leads to a significant American presence in the Middle East, which radicals could very well rally against. By no means is 9-11 guaranteed to happen, but it would be a very easy excuse for America to do what they wanted to do anyways. American politics might have significantly changed, but considering that the defeat of Iraq would be blamed on the failures of President Carter, which means Reagan still easily wins in 1982, it becomes basically impossible to predict alternate presidencies by the 2000s. Still, most Republican cabinets in this period would likely push for a war against Iran. Whether the excuse comes from a horrific terror attack or from somewhere else, America may very well enter the Middle East with a bang and uses any excuse to be able to go to war with Iran. It is possible, and it would be the most interesting, if the US attempts to strike at most Iranian proxies as well, making this alternate war on terror a far greater conflict for the US. Conventionally, the war is absolutely still winnable for them, but it would be far, far more costly than the wars of our timeline. One by one, Iran's proxies and allies might face invasion, while America disrupts Iranian shipping, cutting off oil revenues. Most of the damage of the war comes on the minor anti-Iranian states in the Persian Gulf though, as Iran does everything they can to make this war as costly as they can, mainly by striking their rivals' oil extraction grounds. All of this, while still causing a major oil shock in the world, is futile in the long term as America defeats Iran's proxies, enters Iran proper and starts striking major cities within the region, eventually mostly ending the conventional war. But while the war is now over, the conflict has only just begun. America now has the nation built in at least Iraq, Iran and Afghanistan, but potentially Syria too. Considering how well they did in our timeline with just Iraq and Afghanistan, this should go great. Even if Syria was left out of invasion plans, which they very well could be, that would still mean America now has to reorganize an additional multi-ethnic nation of 70 million people. I have quite literally zero faith that America can manage this alternate Middle East. Civil wars against American influence instantly break out, provisional governments are weak and illegitimate, religious and ethnic minorities begin major revolts, and literally everyone knows that these new regimes only stand because of direct American presence. Even more American soldiers than in our timeline continue to fight in the Middle East in hopes of building stable, democratic allies in the region. America could very well further complicate the situation by creating autonomous regions for minorities, but still being opposed to actually creating new states. Kurdistan is absolutely the best example of this as America might just set up three separate autonomous Kurdistans rather than just biting the bullet and creating a new Kurdish state. Depending on US attitudes, Iran could be subdivided a lot. Autonomous Arab region, Balochistan, Azerbaijan, etc. Now in principle, giving autonomy to minorities isn't a terrible idea. But when the US-backed central governments are already failing, it can quickly become so. Over the course of the following decades, America's occupation over all four states only weakens. Autonomous republics start to increasingly act like independent states as the American-backed governments grow more and more ineffective. In the more extreme timelines, this disaster, entirely created by the Americans, may lead to the collapse of Iran. With secret American approval, the Kurds, one of the few allies of America in the region, basically set up an independent state, an action that drives Turkey further away from the West. The Kurds, making use of the chaos, could very well expand their borders yet further. With Iran in further chaos, Saudi Arabia starts not so secretly backing Arab groups within Iran. In Afghanistan, the American presence is quickly faltering, especially since America's main focus would now be on Iran. An interesting possibility presents itself in the autonomous Azeri regions of Iran. Should the twin Azerbaijans cooperate, though likely not officially unite, at least not yet, their combined population would now reach around 30 million. 
10 times as much as their main rival, Armenia. Azerbaijan and Turkey would grow yet closer together as the two Turkish states start to seriously threaten Armenia and Kurdistan. Should Russia or America ever have a moment of weakness, this could give major opportunities for the Turks to expand. Other potential breakaways are the Baloshi and the Lur, with Baloshi independence being a major threat to Pakistan and Lur independence stripping most of the remaining oil away from Iran and basically delivers a checkmate to Iran from the Saudi camp. During all of this, the issues America experiences today have been increased by tenfold. The Middle East they have sought to stabilize has exploded, now turned into little more than a chessboard for Russia, the Saudis, Turkey and others to fight for control over. It is not impossible that the Saudis and their proxies have taken control of most of Iran's oil and even Iraq's if they played their cards right, further entrenching Saudi Arabia's energy dominance over the rest of the world. The Saudis have basically become the sole hegemons over the Middle East. America's politics have radicalized yet further. There have been more deaths in the Middle East, there has been more invested and there was more at stake. Yet more policy failures are revealed as Iran disintegrates under America's watch. Isolationist sounds from especially the Republican but also the Democratic side sound ever louder. In such a timeline, especially if America does fall under isolationist control for extended periods of time, you can very much expect both Russia and China to act even bolder than in our timeline with less of an American response. Now of course, I very much know that this timeline is extreme, especially with the extent to which Iran explodes. I would myself expect that the exact way in which America fails in the Middle East is less dramatic than this, but I see very little outcomes where these states don't fall into failed warlord states, battleground regions in the new Cold War, and generally a ring of US enemies that cost America trillions to create. Uh, good job? Now of course, it is also possible that America doesn't invade Iran at all. I would personally consider this unlikely considering the opinions of figures like Cheney and the sheer confidence that comes with being the single hegemon of the world. But it is absolutely possible. In that case, while there is still potential for a lot to have changed on the political and geopolitical level, it becomes a lot harder to predict, as we're now a lot closer to our own timeline. A lot will then depend on who is in charge when, which I cannot predict, if 9-11 or a similar event would even happen, and how the person we don't know is in charge would respond to this. Considering how difficult this second outcome is to predict, I decided to leave it out here. But do know, it is a possibility. For now though, this is the end of the video. Thank you all for watching, and consider leaving a like and a comment, as well as subscribing. If you've enjoyed this video, click on the video on top to watch what if Iraq won the Iran-Iraq war. If you've already seen it, then I'm sure that the bottom video is great too. Once again, thank you all for watching, and goodbye. I'm sorry for the quick intermission, but by far most of you aren't subscribed. To keep up to date with all the latest releases, consider doing so. Thank you.